If you talk about people having history and tradition, that's what our party is all about. Richard represents the history and tradition of our party. He's been around from the very, very early days. He's got a wealth of experience. He's seen the good times, he's seen the bad times, and I think he's seen the dreadful times. I've seen the good times now. And the good times are going to roll. Yeah. They're rolling now in the present tense. So what I'd like you to do is put your hands together, please, for Richard Edmonds. <laughs> well Thank you, Mr Chairman, for that, uh, those, warm word, with those warm words. Listen, it's a privilege to be here and an inspiration because your branch here in Burnley, East Lancashire, you got our success rolling in the beginning of this millennium. In the year 2002, you got your first councillors elected and you've had councillors in Burnley Town Hall continuously ever since and you have done very, very well it's a privilege to be here, and when I say it's an inspiration, I'm not exaggerating. We need victories. You've got to see that we can win. We have the theory, we've had the theory for a long time, but to go out amongst British people and persuade them to vote for initially unknown patriots who they didn't know from Adam, and then to vote them into office, and then for brave men and women to keep those positions in the teeth of all the disgusting lies and trash thrown at them by Lib Lab and Con, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Lib Lab and Con, Liberal, Labour, Con, as in con, con, as in con man, yes, Conservative, as in con man, as in confidence trickster, yeah. I arrived a bit early in your town, so I walked around and I went to the town hall, and it is very satisfactory to see the photographs of the BMP councillors, and it is an honour to be amongst your elected councillors, yes, it's an honour and a pleasure. Because we're in this business to win. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to win, and we're in business to win, and winning is very satisfactory. This party was formed by patriots who could see clearly that the old parties had failed us, had failed the British people. The older ones of us in this room, we have the experience to remember a properly run Britain. When I was young, several decades back, when I was young, everybody had a job in this country and everybody was expected to work. Um, the streets were safe and we didn't have religious fanatics trying to blow us up in the name of their religion. And Britain was a properly run country. It was a white country, a British country, and people of my generation remember that. And we have seen the changes and we have seen the damage that the old parties, Lib, Lab and Con, have done to this part, have done to this country. 20, 30, 40 years of immigration from the whole rest of the world. 20, 30, 40 years of home secretaries and governments with their soft on crime and soft on criminals uh, policies. Britain, the inner suburbs of our towns and the inner suburbs of our cities, the inner suburbs of London, which I know very well, I've lived most of my life in London, London, Birmingham and Manchester, British civilization is in danger of collapsing. Um, I'd like to talk about London because it's our capital and what happens in London, what eventually happens to the rest of this country and what is happening in London is appalling. Um, there's been so much immigration into, into Britain that now there are two million foreigners resident in London. Two million foreigners, most of them on the electoral register, so they're influencing the way who gets voted in. Um, so they're taking over uh, the elections in London. There are two million foreigners in London. Half the births, half the babies born in London are born to women, mothers themselves born overseas, in Pakistan, in India, in the West Indies, in Africa, the whole world. Well, that is inevitably the future of London. Um, in parts of London, 
in many inner parts of London, us British are now a distinct minority. Um, I like to travel around the city and I like to see things with my own eyes. And there are many parts of London you can go into the high street on a Saturday afternoon and you can look one way and maybe one person in five is white British. You turn the other way, Barking, for example, in East London, Ilford in House, in Ilford, Hounslow, umpteen inner boroughs. You turn the other way and maybe one person in ten is British and all the rest are foreigners with no allegiance to this country. They're just here for the money. Um, to give you a shocking example, a shocking graphic example of what is happening to our capital. Um, a couple of years ago, the Daily Mail took an aerial shot. I don't know if you can see this. It's an aerial shot of a typical London street where many of us were born into such streets and generation after generation raised families there, lived their lives there. And the Daily Mail went to some trouble to find out who lives in this typical London street as of now. And in the first family, they come from India. In the next family, in the next house, they come from Pakistan. Then India, then Portugal, then Pakistan, then India, then Poland. You know, God knows what they, where they think they are. Eh? They come to England. They expect to see the Queen and Buckingham Palace. They expect to see the Guardsmen, because that's all these, you know, Eastern Europeans know about Britain. And they come. They don't know where they are. However, I'll continue. Poland, India, Pakistan, India, Pakistan, Jamaica, Kenya, Iraq, Iran. House number 40. House number 40 in a typical London street. An English family. And you can be sure that in practice that English family living in number 40 is probably an elderly English woman. Um, her family, her children, her grandchildren have left, have left the area, left the home. She's probably... Um, a widow, her husband probably deceased, so she's living in a street which in her lifetime has utterly and completely changed. No one, she's got nothing in common with her neighbours, she's got nothing in common with the neighbourhood, nobody's got anything in common with anybody else. The Poles have got nothing in common with the Iraqis, the Iraqis have got nothing in common with the Jamaicans, who've got nothing in common with the Indians, who've got nothing in common with um, the Turks, there's no community, because no one's got anything in common with anybody else. They can't speak to each other. They don't want to speak to each other. And on top of that, that's the beginning. Stage one. Stage two is the crime. The crime, because there's no community, nothing. The crime sweeps London. Here is a front page of our London Evening Standard. Five teenagers every day are stabbed or shot. Five teenagers every day. Yesterday, today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Five. Now, not always fatally, not always fatally. I'll come back to that in a second. Not always fatally, but no one wants to be stabbed. No one wants their son or grandson stabbed. I'll tell you what it's like travelling on public transport because the, travel, the public transport system in London is very good. There's lots of buses and lots of trains, but you take your chances. And because I don't own a car and don't want to own a car, I travel by public transport a lot. I travel on the buses, I travel on the trains. And I'll tell you what it's like travelling in these inner areas. The, the buses are crowded. There's constant traffic jams, the bus jerks down the street, everyone is jerking around to packed buses, packed with all the whole world. And inside those buses, there's an atmosphere of frigid civility. Because no one wants to bump into anybody else, because there might be an explosion, of, an explosion. And every time the bus comes to the next bus stop, everybody discreetly sees, watches, to see who gets on the bus. Because if a gang of youths gets on the bus of a different different ethnicity to one's own ethnicity, whether one's a Pole, an Iraqi, a Vietnamese, a Chinese, a South American Indian, a North American Indian, whatever you are, you don't want the other lot getting on that bus. Crime is destroying British civilization in in a London, in a Manchester, in a Birmingham. Now, a little bit earlier on, uh, we heard the name of a 
was mentioned here, the name of a leading Labour politician, Harriet Harman, who has taken it upon herself to criticise our wonderful party. Now, when you ever see 